What's up? It's Toby the Great, and I'm back with another video. Told you I'd be back. I know it's been about a month since I last uploaded, but don't worry, I'm back for good. And in this video, we're gonna go back to talking about Q Boy right here. You see him? I made a lot of changes to the game, I made a lot of good updates, and I want to talk a little bit first about how much of a steep learning curve Unity has. I'm not even going to lie to you all, I've been really struggling with learning how to work with Unity for these last few weeks. Although I wasn't working on a game every single day, when I was, I got frustrated really easily. There's just so much to learn about making a game, going from physics to gravity to all the different kinds of bugs that happen in the editor or in runtime, but you can't really figure out why it's going on. It took me about two days just to get a proper jump animation going the way I wanted it to. Before we get into how much progress I made, I really wanted to talk about just how much I learned about it. You know what? You, let me just show you the game first. <laughs> what am I saying? And last time we left off, Cute Boy was just jumping around in a room that didn't really have much going on. Just some random items and it was kind of unclear what the direction of the game was headed in. I made a lot of changes. So the first major thing was kind of stripping down the environment. I had some ideas for the game, but I decided to pivot completely. It's not going to be called the quarantine game anymore for obvious reasons. You'll see the new name of the game in a little bit, but the first major step was kind of shipping down the environment, making it a whole lot more simple. I was shooting way too far in terms of ambition for how I wanted this game to end up, and the first major step I learned about working as a, yeah, I guess as a game developer. <laughs> I'm not a game developer. But the first major thing that I've learned in this process is to just start really simple. Thinking of the most simplest idea for a game that you have and making it even more simple than that. I was way too focused on making the quote unquote perfect game when I realized that I don't really have much experience building games in the first place. Just like in general software development, you want to get a minimally viable product first and then just iterate from there making better and better games. So I took away all the objects, I left the door and the ground and I got to work. The first major feature I wanted to implement though is a camera that followed Cuboy around. The screen size, especially if you're playing on mobile, is going to be smaller than the overall environment. And I wanted to find the best way to make all the rooms or the entire stage of the game visible. I could have it like separate rooms as when you walk to the edge of a room, you enter the next part. But there was no need to make different scenes in Unity and overcomplicate how many different files I'll have to manage. So I just settled on one overall scene. So after installing the Cinemachine module from the Unity Asset Store and working around with it a bit, I finally got it to where I wanted, where the camera slowly follows Cuboy around. And the next thing I wanted to add was an apple collectible. I want Cuboy to be able to walk around, collect these apples, and also to show a graphic on the top right corner of the screen, which I did. And again, this was an asset that I created with PhotoP, the Photoshop-like free app that's available for free online. So <laughs> I said free twice, but I'll link it in the description. You can see how it works pretty simply here. The apples just populate the screen. The limit is three apples at a time on the screen. The apples are just on the timer where each one generates every second or so. And there's a max apple count of three at a time to be shown on the screen. Again, as always, I'm always happy to go more in depth with code features so you see up here the max apple count is set to three and i also have hard-coded values for the stage bounds that i need to change to make it more responsive depending on the screen size and the respawn time for each apple is set to one in here i just create apples every second as long as the apple count is less than the max count then we're just going to keep creating apples but as always if you have any questions about my code design or variable names and all of that feel free to hit me up in the comments or in my discord which i will put up here Wait, no, it's a link, I'm dumb. And as you can see, that's the main objective of the game. Collect as many apples as you can and get as high of a score as you can. But that is still kind of boring. So I added an obstacle or an enemy in your path and these are asteroids. So here you can see that I have this asteroid generation script that's similar in a lot of ways to the apple generation script. However, the main difference as you can see here is when an asteroid is spawned, it's gonna be spawned only at the right side of the stage. And also it's 
perpetually running the entire game. So it's just gonna keep sending asteroids your way. And if I go to the actual asteroid class, when an asteroid is spawned, you can see here, it's actually moving in a predefined speed value right here. So every time an asteroid spawns, it's gonna move from the right side to the left side of the screen. And your job as the player is pretty simply collect the apples, dodge the asteroids. Right now, this is a pretty simple kind of game. The, the asteroids spawn every second, so you can easily kind of time it in your head and keep that rhythm. In future versions of this game, if I keep working on it, I'll probably add larger asteroids, random respawning times maybe. They'll spawn from the top of the screen and fall vertically. And it's a lot of different cool things that I could play with here. Lastly is the health system. I created a sprite sheet filled with the different states of your player health. And I use purple because going on this color world site and comparing the background color of the stage, apparently this color is split complementary. So I thought that'd be cool, you know, for people that are into color theory. So yeah, it's kind of this purplish violet color for the hearts that represent your player health. And each time an asteroid hits you, it goes down. And then once it hits zero, So this is the current state of apples and asteroids. You run around collecting apples with Q-Boy and avoiding asteroids. And super simple and I'm so happy I did this. I really wish I stuck with a really simple concept to start when I was first playing this game. And now before I talk more about what I learned from working in game development and with the Unity engine for this last month, if you're new to this channel, you like the type of content I do, hey, don't forget to like and subscribe, thanks. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, working in Unity was a huge struggle for me for a while. I won't say that I was like working on it for hours every single day, but man, sometimes <laughs> it feels like game development is an entirely different field from software development or, or just coding in general, because when you're a game developer, you're not only working on writing code or being a software developer, you're also a gameplay mechanic creator a story writer, a graphic designer, if you're creating your own assets, and a bunch of these other roles that make you think a lot differently from like this one track minded of, oh, I just gotta write code to do this thing. You can spend days like I did working on a perfect jump mechanic only for it really not to work out in practice once you're actually playing the game with your, yourself. And it's a really, it was a really cool exercise. It really taught me to step outside the box. I had to tap into the other part of my brain that wasn't just thinking of ones and zeros and variables and all that. Like, and I had to really consider what makes a game that is not only fun to work on, but is cool to play at the same time. I won't lie, I got really frustrated at times, especially working with the camera and working with scaling for different resolution sizes. I had this huge issue where the camera that follows Q-Boy around just wasn't working. And it was because I kind of orientated the game to be for a specific camera mechanic. If I can give advice to a game, I, and I don't know if I'm warranted or I'm qualified to give advice because I've really only been working on games for a few weeks. I would say do not give up, but at the same time, take a break. If it's getting frustrating and the perfect game that you have in your mind just isn't really working the way you see it, just take a step back and it's, it's all right to bump your head against the wall and then just take a, I took a like a five day, six day break where I just did not open Unity, the Unity editor at all. Like I didn't even look at code. I was so done with it. And kind of having that outside perspective, once you come back in, it, it, it's refreshing. And once you get that breakthrough, once things finally work together, once that run animation isn't flickering like it was before, and then it becomes worth it. I mean, maybe, maybe it becomes worth it. I'm not sure. I'm gonna keep working on corn, uh, whew, almost said it again. I'm gonna keep working on apples and asteroids if I can. And I left it kind of open-ended right now for two reasons. One, I really wanted to make sure that I made a really simple concept that I could see from start to finish. That was the goal at from the first video if you go back. And that's why I kind of took a step back from the basketball RPG game to make sure that I could actually get good at making games first. I've had some really cool and interesting and of course helpful comments from these videos that have helped me 
create uh, or help me get through some of the issues that I was going through. So yeah, I want this to be a game for this channel as well as for me. So if you guys have any suggestions for cool features, any kind of recommendations for things I'm doing, or you want to criticize my code like it happens in every video these days, don't hesitate to comment below and also to hit me up on the Discord. As always, Thanks again for watching and I'm having a bunch more content coming out, don't worry.